That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. We are living in a time where there is a lot of stupid to go around, and part of the reason for that stupid is something I alluded to earlier in the program, that when people are panicked or freaked out or afraid, they tend to make decisions in haste, and those decisions tend to not be good decisions. Today is the latest installment of that. There is a bill in the Senate right now that would do a number of things, but among them, and this may be the dumbest thing out of all of them, is they are contemplating sending a $1,000 check to everybody. Now, I have intense sympathy for people that are incapable of working right now and are having to rely on friends and family and neighbors to help them out in this. But the idea that we need to send unilaterally every single person a check, granted, I do like that plan better than giving it to specific people because then only the people that wind up with it are people that, that don't need to, to get it. But this is basically a giant redistribution of wealth scheme that the Democrats have been pushing for for a while. Andrew Yang, who was running for the president and, and trying to get the Democrat nomination recently, came up with a similar plan, even though his was actually a lot more logical than the one that is being proposed right now. So this bill is being floated by the White House, and they are considering even supporting this. And it was promoted by Mitt Romney, who has never met a spending measure he doesn't like. That was one of the big problems with Mitt Romney. He was running against Barack Obama. It was really difficult for him to run against him, considering he wanted to pretty much spend as much money as Barack Obama did. And that was something that was very difficult for him to do. But the stimulus has never worked. And they're talking about spending about $1 trillion on the stimulus here. Can anybody name a government stimulus that actually did what it was supposed to do? Because you look all the way back to the New Deal with FDR, all the way up to the Obama stimulus packages, both of which were massive bust and wasted tons of taxpayer money and did not help the economy. We didn't start pulling out of the economy until the last years, really about the last year and a half of the Obama presidency. Those stimulus packages both came within a year and a half of him taking office. And so the stimulus packages had nothing to do with the economic recovery. And they have never worked at any point. And by the way, the first stimulus package that President Barack Obama put out was about the same amount as the stimulus package that is being proposed right now. This is a very, very dumb idea. Because currently, there are 254 million adult citizens. Now, doing simple math, you can calculate that if every single one received a $1,000 check, that would mean that we would be spending $254 billion to be able to pull that off. Now, remember that we are currently already operating at a $1 trillion deficit, meaning we spend about a trillion dollars more than we take in from tax revenue. And we only bring in about $3.8 trillion, which is a mind-boggling number, but that's not nearly enough to cover our annual budget, which sits at roughly $5 trillion. And so, considering we bring in $3.8 trillion, 3.8, closer to 3.9, we're not sure. It depends on where your projections are and, and which one that you believe from the Congressional Budget Office of what we are projected to bring in. But anyway, it's roughly $3.8 trillion. Either way, that means that the 250, uh, $254 billion we would have to spend on this would be roughly one-sixteenth of all of the tax revenue that we bring in. All of it. That is an insane amount of money. Now, granted, like I said on the onset, I do like the idea of getting it back to the citizens more than it being distributed by the government deciding who gets it and who doesn't. But also remember that a large percentage of the American population, even the adults, do not pay taxes which means that a whole bunch of people would be getting money even though they did not put money into the system itself. So this one-time spending measure would cost one-sixteenth of all of the revenue that we bring in for an entire year, and it would happen in one day. That is an unsustainable plan for a number of reasons. 
Because ultimately, you have to ask the question, just like you do in every government program, where is this money coming from? And there are only three possible answers. One, it's coming from taxes. But if we're going to be bringing in the amount of money that we're projected to bring in, that doesn't look good, considering that we would be spending a sixteenth of our entire revenue in a single day and also increasing the amount of taxes that we have, because this would put us even further over budget. That's a really, really dumb idea at a time where businesses are going to be suffering anyway. At a time where people are going to have issues going out and spending money anyway. So all that would do is actually hurt the economy, not bolster it. The other source it could come from is China. Do you really think China is going to be in favor of giving us another loan right now? I mean, maybe they do. But A, do we really want to have to pay that back later? And B, do you really think China, who is being hit the hardest by the coronavirus and is still trying to recover from this, thankfully they are, it seems as though, at least right now, they are over the hump and starting to do a little bit better. Do you really think China believes themselves to be in a position to offer another loan of this magnitude to the United States? Because I tend to think that they probably are going to be pretty hesitant to do that. That's going to be a real hard sell to the Chinese people. Granted, I think they should just give the money to us because they started this whole thing in the first place. But nonetheless, you know what I'm saying. That was a joke. I'm not actually advocating that. But when it comes to this, the idea that China is going to be super willing and chomping at the bit to give us a loan seems incredibly dubious to me. And frankly, I don't want to have to pay this thing off later anyway, as much debt as we already are into them. And then the third place it could come from is we print money which has a number of unforeseen consequences, but the ones I'm more worried about are the foreseen consequences. If we have another, another quantitative e easing where the federal government just starts printing money like crazy to be able to send all these checks out to people, what do you think that's going to do to the value of the dollar? See, what they're doing is they're stealthily taxing the people that have savings because it devalues the dollars that you already have. This is just another form of redistribution of wealth. The way that it's doing is the people that are prepared, the people that actually do have a nest egg, the people that actually do have money in the banks and did do things the right way and did prepare for an eventuality like this are going to be robbed to help the people who did not prepare. Now, as somebody who did do a decent amount of preparation, I wouldn't say that I'm super prepared for this. I don't know that anybody was super prepared for this. If somebody came to my door and needed food or needed something to help them out, I do the absolute best that I can to help them. But I don't like the government taking things from me and stealing from the people who saved through inflation to be able to provide a program for the people who did not save. If you remember the parable, the story, however you want to say it, of the grasshopper and the ant, it would be like the government taking food from the ant's mouth to give it to the grasshopper who goofed around all summer and didn't do any work and didn't gather food. That's effectively what would be happening here. You see, the thing is, this is not going to really help people with the coronavirus because they're going to spend it on whatever. It's amazing to me, and I know that this is anecdotal evidence, but stay with me on this. Every single person that I've talked to about this Every single one, every time they come up with something that they're going to spend it on, it has nothing to do with the coronavirus or preparing for it. It has nothing to do with groceries or essentials for their families. I had one person suggest that they were going to use the money if they got it on things for their house, like new baseboards and new windows or something to that effect. Another person actually suggested that they were going to use it to buy a whole bunch of video games to keep them entertained during this thing, which I understand wanting to be entertained. That's part of the reason I'm doing the show during the coronavirus quarantine. But doing, the, first of all, you have tactics for free, so I don't know why you would want to do that. <laughs> but nonetheless, if you're going to do that, you're just buying things that you don't need, non-essentials with the government money. Now, again, I know that that's just anecdotal evidence, and that's secondary to my primary argument that I just made. But the point is, people are not going to use this for that kind of thing, by and large. They're going to use it for whatever it is that they need to spend money on at the time. 
And so I do not see how this winds up helping in any way and not to be outdone by all the stupidity surrounding her. AOC, of course, had to fire off something ignorantly about this because she was also floating this and other policy proposals. So this was AOC's reaction. And I just, I love this one. She says, this is unacceptable. Trump is using this public health crisis as an opportunity to push tax cuts and corporate bailouts. This is an emergency. We need to help vulnerable people and small businesses now with paid leave, extended unemployment, UBI, Medicaid expansion, and mortgage suspensions. Now, does anybody catch the hilarity going on in that tweet? That she starts complaining that Donald Trump is doing things like cutting taxes and giving money to businesses. By the way, that one I do not agree with and I think actually is a bad idea. I just explained how stimulus packages never work out the way that they're supposed to. But in AOC's rage over this and anger over this, at how dare President Trump ever use this crisis to push his personal policy proposals? And then she goes right into proposing how we should use this crisis to push all the things that she has been pushing for for a really long time, <laughs> like a universal basic income or Medicaid expansion, that kind of thing. So it's just hilarious to me that AOC is so completely devoid of all self-awareness that she can, in the same tweet that she's complaining about Donald Trump using the crisis to promote his personal policy agenda, that she does exactly the same thing. I mean, it is just hysterical that she is so devoid of all self-awareness. It's, it's like she can't even sense it. Ultimately, what this comes down to, though, I understand the government acting in some ways. And, and for somebody that's very libertarian-leaning like myself, that is a big step that's not exactly easy for me to take. But on situations like this where we're in an emergency situation, I understand the government taking steps and even taking big steps to try to curtail it. I totally am on board with spending a significant amount of money on the CDC to try to make sure that we have the testing kits out. We try to expedite government work as quickly as we can to get things like uh, vaccines tested. I, I understand increasing money in research and all of those things. And to a degree, even though I disagree with unemployment benefits as a whole, I even understand the rationale of extending it past the point where somebody, because right now they wouldn't really be able to find work considering there's going to be virtually nobody hiring. Even though I disagree with unemployment on the whole, I kind of at least understand the logic in that one specifically. But all these other things that are just policy dreams of the Democrats, that they're basically trying to go through their checklist of all the things they've been advocating for for years and using this crisis as a way to do that. It's sickening, it's slimy, and ultimately it doesn't do anything to do to combat the coronavirus. I don't understand the idea that we allow Democrats to hold this crisis, uh, crisis over our heads as leverage and try to use it to get all of their policy proposals that they've been doing for years through. And I hope the Republicans at some point grow a spine and say, no, enough is enough. Let's pass a clean bill that only deals directly with things dealing with the coronavirus. Unfortunately, I'm not going to hold my breath on them doing that. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.